Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel where today I'm going to be showing you how I made this incredibly gorgeous, stormy, starry set of night sky dice. This design is basically an extension of my Cloud Nebula style, but with the addition of some star glitter. For this one, I went with holographic black and iridescent glitter that just adds such an incredible extra flash and really brings home that night sky theme. So let's make some dice. To begin, I'm using this Mylar that I got from OOAK Artist Emporium. This color from them is called Crystal Amethyst, and I'm just cutting off what I think will be enough for all of the dice that I need to make, and then wrinkling and crinkling it up as much as possible, trying to add texture to every little bit of this vinyl that I can. Then once the Mylar is nice and wrinkled, I stretch it back out so that I can begin cutting it, just stacking the pieces on top of each other and then cutting them into smaller and smaller bits until I get to the point where from the stack I'm just cutting basically little shreds off from the edge. I do try to keep things not uniform. I want different sizes and different shapes of mylar for the different molds. Next up, once all of my mylar is cut, I move on to the glitter. This is black four-pointed star holographic glitter that I am using here, and I just spread the glitter out a bit across my hand. It makes it easier to one, see, and then two, grab every individual little piece, which is exactly what I am going to be doing. The way that I work with any sort of large or shaped glitter to ensure that it is well spread across my dice, that it doesn't all sink to the bottom of the molds, which is what will happen if you just mix it into your resin, is going piece by piece, one by one, and manually putting every tiny little speck of glitter precisely where I want it to go in the dice mold. Is this a massive pain? Yes. Does it take a really long time? Also yes, but for me at least, it is the way that I have found where I can work with large and shaped glitter to get it well distributed across all faces of the die and typically get it to mostly stay in place. So I just go ahead and repeat this process until all of my molds are done. Here I'm trying to show you that the glitter does stick to the silicone. It will adhere to the sides of the molds. Again, some might come loose during the pouring process, but most should stay in place. And then just a small detail here, but I do go along and put a little piece of glitter onto all of my caps as well. Again, just to aid with making sure the glitter is distributed across all or as many faces as it can be. And because I decided to do two different colors of glitter for this set, that means I get to do the entire process over again. So I am grabbing my star glitter, this time I'm doing iridescent five point stars, spreading them out a bit across my hands just so I can see and work with them better and also to show you on the video. And then one at a time, taking every little bitty piece of glitter and placing it in my dice molds where I would like it ideally to be. Iridescent glitter is uniquely challenging because the whole point of it is it's kind of half invisible, so it can be really hard to spot in your molds once you've placed it, but you just kind of have to go with your heart and do your best. And hey, nobody's going to complain about too many stars, right? Once I'm happy with the amount of glitter that I have in my molds, I go around and put another piece or two onto the caps as well, and then it is time to work with the mylar that we cut up earlier. Now, this step is very easy. We've already cut our mylar, so we're just putting it into our molds. I use my bigger pieces for my D20 and D12 molds and my smaller pieces for my D4 molds, and then just fill in little bits here and there until I'm happy with the way my molds look. I don't like too little mylar, so I always do more than one piece, but I don't like so much that I'm actually having to pack it into the mold, so find your happy medium. Once all of that is done, it is finally time to start working with our resin, so pour however much resin you need for your molds, and then give it the good mix, 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 mix to make sure it is fully combined. Then we are going to separate out resin for our different colors. In this first little cup, I'm pouring probably about 15 milliliters of resin that I will color white later on. And then this main cup is going to be purple first, starting with Pixis Lilac, and then doing a couple of drops. 
I also want this guy to be sparkly, so I'm taking this cup that's a mix of glitter from a geo design that I was making. I believe it's holographic blue and purple glitter with some silver flakes in it. So I'm just going to add a scoop of that in and then begin mixing my color together. Again, this ink will look blue when you mix it. It will then cure purple as you saw at the beginning, but this can make it a little tricky to work with when you're getting accustomed. You just kind of have to trust that the color is going to change. Once this has been mixed, I then also color my white. So as always, I use Pinata Blanco Blanco. I'm so sorry, but if you are having an issue with your clouds or your white color and you don't use Pinata Blanco Blanco, my main advice is going to be for you to use this ink and then get back to me with your problems. It is the only white ink that I use. I just genuinely think it's the best and it has never failed me. But now it's time to pour our resin, so beginning with our light purple color that looks blue but is definitely going to be purple, I'm just pouring a little bit of this over the mylar into each of my dice molds. Once I've done this first layer, what I want with this design is a bit of a color gradient, so I'm then darkening my existing resin color by adding a couple more drops of that same lilac ink and then mixing it in and pouring this new slightly darker or more pigmented, if you will, color over top that initial light layer. As part of the darkening gradient for this design, I wanted to bring in some blue next, so I grabbed this cobalt ink, and if you've seen my videos, you know I'm very timid with adding extra ink, so I do a drop on my coffee swizzler, dip that just barely in the resin, and then I slowly add more color this way so that I am not adding way too much. Typically that does mean that I come back and add little bits at a time like this until I get the color that I want, but you know what they say, slow and steady wins the race. Now I'm just going to repeat this process of pouring a bit of a layer into my dice molds over top that mylar, and then adding a little bit more blue to darken the color up and continue this gradient all the way to the end, layering this on top of my existing resin in the mold until my molds are basically all the way full. Then once my molds are full or most of the way full of translucent resin, I do some degassing. I hit them with my heat gun at the top and then also just squeeze and wiggle around the sides of the mold to try to get some air out of the mylar. And because of course I cannot make a simple design to save my life, I also decided to add a black swirl to this. I wanted something a little darker. I use a toothpick to do most of my ink swirls putting a drop on it and then slowly letting it work its way down before I take that toothpick, dip it all the way down into a mold and begin swirling it as I pull up almost in the same way that I use a pipette to do my clouds. So I just repeat this process in every mold. If you've seen my blood in the water tutorial, this is the same thing that I did there. We're just swirling it through mylar in this one. And now it is finally time for my favorite part, the clouds. I almost feel like I could give these instructions in my sleep at this point, but here's how I make my clouds. I take my pipette and I pull up as much resin as it will take, and then with that pipette I insert the tip all the way down to the bottom of my dice mold where I begin squeezing gently. As I squeeze, I slowly begin to twist, swirl, and pull the pipette up higher into the mold until it is out of the resin. Then I draw more white up when I need it. Rinse and repeat in every single dice mold. Once all of the clouds are done, my last kind of optional step is I just take any excess resin and top off my molds with it before it is time to put our caps on and pop it into the pressure pot for a day to see how they come out tomorrow. I mean, obviously you don't have to wait until tomorrow to see them, you saw them at the start of the video, but I had to wait until the next day to demold them. That's what I was doing here, figured I would just give you a really quick showing of demolding the dice. Now it is about here that I will note I played myself. Um, I had started filming this video intending it to be a video about glitter, why glitter sinks, and how I prevent my glitter from sinking. But as we can see, I picked holographic black and iridescent glitter, Two colors that are not going to show up well in photos, but look gorgeous in person and in video. So after realizing that, I decided to just scrap all of this footage and start over. 
But I really, really loved these dice. I kept looking back at them, and I went through the whole filming process anyway, so rather than trashing all of the footage that I somehow miraculously didn't lose any of for once, I figured I would just piece it together and show you how I made this design, which I have now named A Storm of Stars. With all of that being said, that's what I have for you in this video. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye